Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic is correction and removals. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and watch the introduction. Check out the video description below for links to any supporting information and a summary of the material that we will cover. In my executive series, we have a standard agenda which covers four main areas. You can see those in the progress bar. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for the three bonus questions. Our requirement, correction and removals, comes directly from 21 CFR Part 806 and 13485 Section 8.3.3. Corrections and removals in five words. Report field actions to FDA. When a medical device that you make is found to either be in violation of the act or present a major risk to public health, you have to take action against that medical device. That action may be going out and getting it. That action may be telling the customer to destroy it or not to use it. Whatever the action you take, you have to meet the requirements of 806. Manufacturers must establish and maintain procedures that define how they do corrections, removals, field actions, recalls, or whatever you want to call them. The procedures need to define how you analyze the quality issue, how you do your risk assessment, how it's ultimately reviewed, approved, and then the execution of your field action. The FDA has different risk classifications for recalls. A class one recall is the highest risk, class two is moderate risk, and class three is the lowest risk. All class one and class two recalls must be reported to the FDA within 10 days of initiating the recall. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, I'm reporting all required recalls and field actions to the FDA according to the timing requirements. Second, when I have volatile product out in the field, either the product is not safe or it violates the act, I take action against that product and I either go get it or I bring it back through the recall process. And then finally, I maintain all my recall records so that when auditors come in, they can review those records to show that I followed my process and I met all the regulatory requirements. So how do I know this is not working? Well, I don't have a procedure for doing recalls. Second, I have instances where product should be recalled and I don't do it. So I either don't follow my process or I ignore significant quality issues in the field. And then finally, my recall records themselves, they're missing signatures, they're incomplete, they're not approved. I'm just, I'm not executing recalls appropriately and my documentation is incomplete. Now for those three bonus questions. First, how many actual field actions or recalls have we done in the last three years? Second, out of the ones that we have done, how many did we report to the FDA? And then finally, what has to be done or what has to be completed before a recall or a field action would be fully closed out? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.